Welcome to Rory Academy YouTube channel where we present information that helps you improve your understanding and knowledge about power electronics technology and its emerging applications. Today we will be discussing about the fundamental properties of semiconductors. After a brief introduction of power semiconductor devices, we will be discussing the difference between metals, insulators and semiconductors. Principles behind electrons and holes, recombination that occurs in a semiconductor device, and drift and diffusion in a power semiconductor device. An ideal power semiconductor device has the following properties, namely, large breakdown voltages, fast turn on and turn off, reduced on state voltages and resistances, large power dissipation capability. Despite significant progress in the development of power semiconductor devices, there are none available that simultaneously have all these above stated properties. In all device types, there is a trade-off between breakdown voltages and on-state losses. While in some devices, there is also a trade-off between on-state losses and switching speeds. Such trade-offs mean that there is not one device that can be used for all applications. The requirement of the specific application must be matched to the capabilities of the available devices. This often requires clever and innovative design approaches. For example, several devices may have to be combined in parallel or series connections to control larger amounts of power. Metals, Insulators, and Semiconductors Electrical current will flow in a material if there are charge carriers, usually electrons, in the material that are free to move in response to an applied electric field. The number of free carriers in various materials varies over an extraordinarily wide range. In metals such as copper or silver, the free electron density is very high, whereas in insulators such as quartz or aluminium oxide, the free electron density is very low. The number of free carriers in various materials varies over an extraordinarily wide range. In metals or insulator, the free carrier density is a constant of the material and cannot be changed to any significant degree. A material such as silicon or gallium arsenide, which has a free carrier density intermediate between that of an insulator and a metal, is termed a semiconductor. A free carrier density intermediate between that of an insulator and a metal is termed a semiconductor. In a semiconductor the free carrier density can be changed by orders of magnitude either by introduction of impurities into the material or by the application of electric fields to appropriate semiconductor structures. Electrons and Holes A single crystal of a semiconductor such as silicon, which has four valence electrons, is composed of a regular array or lattice of silicon atoms. Each silicon atom is bonded to four nearest neighbors, by covalent bonds composed of electrons shared between the two adjacent atoms. At temperatures above absolute zero, some of these bonds are broken by energy carried by the silicon atom due to its random thermal motion about its equilibrium position. This process is known as thermal ionization, creates a free electron and leaves behind a fixed positive charge on the nucleus of the silicon atom where the bond was broken. However, the silicon atom where this free electron originated now has a positive charge, and the result of the transaction is the movement of the positive charge. This moving positive charge is termed a hole because it originates from an empty bond normally occupied by an electron. Doped Semiconductors The thermal equilibrium density of electrons and holes can be changed by adding appropriate impurity atoms to the semiconductor. In the case of silicon, the appropriate impurities are elements from column 3 of the periodic table, such as boron, or from column V, such as phosphorus. Elements such as boron have only three electrons, valence electrons, available for bonding to other atoms in a crystal, and thus when boron is introduced into a silicon crystal, it needs an additional electron to bond to the four neighboring silicon atoms. The boron will very quickly acquire or accept the needed electron from the silicon lattice by capturing a free electron. This immobilizes a free electron and leaves a hole free to move through the crystal. The result is that the silicon now has more free holes, now termed majority carriers, than free electrons, now termed minority carriers. The silicon is said to be doped p-type with an acceptor impurity. Column V elements, such as phosphorus, have five valence electrons but only four are needed for bonding in a silicon lattice. Such atoms are easily thermally ionized when placed in a silicon crystal and the fifth electron becomes free. The resulting positive charge on the donor impurity represents a trapped or bound hole. Electrons are now the majority carriers and holes are the minority carriers. The silicon is said to be doped n-type. The impurity levels commonly used in semiconductor devices are orders of magnitude smaller than the density semiconductor atoms. Are orders of magnitude smaller than the density semiconductor atoms. 
Thus, the presence of impurities in a semiconductor will not affect the rate at which covalent bonds are broken by thermal ionization and subsequently refilled by free electrons, electron hole recombination. This means that the product of the thermal equilibrium electron density, now termed N0, and the thermal equilibrium hole density, now termed P0, must still equal Ni square even though P0 and N0 are no longer equal. The above relationship is sometimes called the law of mass action or the principle of detailed balance. A doped, extrinsic, semiconductor is electrically neutral even though N0 is no longer equal to P0. The positive charge per unit volume in the extrinsic material is the sum of the whole density P0 and the ionized donor density ND, whereas the negative charge density is the sum of the electron density N0 and the ionized acceptor density NA. The space charge neutrality condition in the general case where both donors and acceptors are assumed to be P0 plus ND equals N0 plus Na. Recombination Fixed numbers of free electrons and holes require that mechanisms exist for the disappearance or recombination of them at the same rate as they are generated in thermal equilibrium. These mechanisms include direct recombination of electrons and holes, capture of a free electron in an empty covalent bond and the trapping of carriers by impurities or imperfections in the crystal. In our largely qualitative examination of device physics, a simple rate equation describing the approximate time behavior of the excess carrier density is sufficient for our purposes. Space charge neutrality forces the excess hole density to equal the excess electron density. In most situations it is convenient to consider the lifetime as a constant of the material. However, in two situations encountered in power semiconductor devices, the lifetime varies with device operating conditions. First, the excess carrier lifetime will increase somewhat as the internal temperature of the devices increases. This will lead to a lengthening of the switching times of some devices. In simplistic terms, the minority carriers are more energetic at higher temperatures and thus are somewhat less likely to be captured by a recombination center. The value of the excess carrier lifetime has important effects on the characteristics of minority carrier, also called bipolar power semiconductor devices. Larger values of the lifetime minimize the on-state losses but also tend to slow down the switching transition from on to off and vice versa. Hence, the device manufacturer strives for precise and reproducible control of the lifetime during the fabrication process. Two commonly used methods of lifetime control are the use of gold doping and the use of electron irradiation. Gold is an impurity in silicon devices that acts as a recombination center. The higher the gold doping density, the shorter the lifetimes will be. When electron irradiation is used, high energy, a few million electron volts of kinetic energy, electrons penetrate deeply, the depth of penetration is a function of the energy, into a semiconductor before they collide with the crystalline lattice. When a collision occurs, imperfections in the crystalline lattice are created that act as recombination centers. The impinging dose of high energy electrons is easily controlled, so the final density of recombination centers and thus the lifetime is under good control. In recent years this method has become the preferred method of lifetime control because it can be applied during the final stages of fabrication as a final tuning or tweaking of the device characteristics that depend on the value of the lifetime. Drift and Diffusion The flow of current in a semiconductor is the sum of the net flow of holes in the direction of the current and the net flow of electrons in the opposite direction. The free carriers can move via two mechanisms, drift and diffusion. When an electric field is impressed across a semiconductor, the free holes are accelerated by the field and acquire a velocity component parallel to the field while electrons acquire a velocity component anti-parallel to the field. This velocity is termed the drift velocity and is proportional to the strength of the electric field. If there is a variation in the spatial density of the free carriers, then there will be a movement of carriers from regions of higher concentration to regions of lower concentration. This movement is termed diffusion and is due to the random thermal velocity that each free carrier has. Such a spatial variation in carrier density could be obtained by a variety of methods including a variation in doping density. The movement of carriers by diffusion will produce a component of current density that, in one dimension, in a particular situation, current flow will usually be either predominantly by drift or by diffusion. In the general case, current flow by both mechanisms may have to be considered simultaneously. Thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe to this channel for your weekly videos.